Peter. So I'm glad that I can talk here about this new device we're building. So the motivation for, um, for this research is the prevalence of falls in the elderly population. I don't know whether you knew it, but falls are the most common, frequent, most common cause of injury and hospitalization in the elderly. And actually many people die within one year after a fall. And one of the most frequent causes for falls are balance deficits. So we're trying to develop a robotic system that helps people balance and prevent falls. One of the primary requirements if you want to build something for elderly people is that it has to be very easy to wear. They need to be able to put it on and off themselves. So that's very challenging and almost impossible with an exoskeletal approach. Second, the device should work for any arbitrary fall direction. So we don't know a priori into which direction the person is going to fall. Third, the, the system needs to be portable. So we need very low actuator torque and power requirements um, in order to realize it. And finally, con con control of this should work well together with the human controller. So we'll actually start with the controller and leave the hardware open till later. So the challenge in this control question is actually that we've got two controllers that work together on the same <coughs> side, the device controller and the human controller. And you might know that this can very easily lead to instability. Our way around this is very simple. We don't apply closed loop control to the device, but we only do open loop control that's triggered by the information that the person has lost balance. We use a very, very simple linear inverted pendulum model. We use a capture point or extrapolated center of mass to determine when a person might have lost balance. And in that moment, we trigger a feed forward torque profile or force profile that will upright the person again. And using the simple model, we can actually solve the differential equation for the parameterization that we chose and, and find a closed, loop, a closed solution for the, for the force profile we need to apply. Here's a simulation. You see a person and the extrapolated center of mass leaving a reachable region, which could be the basic support or the region that he can reach with his feet. And the moment the XCOM leaves the, this region, the feet forward force profile is applied and the person would be upright again. We didn't only simulate this, we actually did a, a study with a locomat robot. You just saw a picture in the previous talk. Um, normally the locomat robot is confined to the sagittal plane, but we use a, a modified version that allows also lateral translation, so we can use it for balance training. And we can just simply uh, realize this force on the pelvis, which I just had in, in the model. We can push the person once the person loses balance. Um, in order to make healthy subjects actually lose balance, we had them walk on a very thin line so that eventually they would fall. And, um, and each time the controller pushed them up again, we asked them whether that was actually a correct intervention, whether they would really have fallen without the device. Um, and we also asked them in the end how comfortable they found the, the intervention. Well, um, they did find it successful, at least in this subjective rating, which I don't trust so much, but at least they told us that uh, almost always it was a correct intervention. So they would have fallen if the device hadn't pushed them. But the comfort was judged as extremely uncomfortable. So people really didn't, didn't like the feel, and some of them even complained about lower back pain after the experiment. So this definitely needs to be improved. Okay, so coming to hardware, um, the most challenging is how to, how to make it easy to wear for elderly subjects. And actually, um, think about my own grandmother, they often cannot even bend down to put anything on their legs easily, so it needs to be something that actually attaches to their upper body. And our idea is to use control moment gyroscopes and using a um, um, sophisticated assembly, we can actually get it to as low as um, 10 kilograms and can, we can put it all into a backpack. So gyroscopes, actually control moment gyroscopes, so the gyroscopes are used to generate torques, not just to measure, you can use different effects. Um, in general, you have a heavy rotating mass and you can apply a torque around the spin axis of the rotating mass and use the reaction torque to operate your, your, your robot or your human. The disadvantage is once you reach higher speeds, and that happens very quickly, you need very high powers despite low torques. So that's uh, an extremely difficult or challenging uh, way to, to generate torques. The other way is very much um, more, effect, more efficient, is to actually rotate the device about an axis <coughs> that's perpendicular to its spin axis. Then you get a, a, a torque about an axis that's perpendicular to the first two axes, and it's much larger than the torque you need to rotate it. So that's, that's exploited by control moment gyroscopes, which are frequently used in satellites and in space. Uh, in, in space. Um, so in order to, to stabilize the person for arbitrary polar directions, we actually need multiple gyroscopes in order to avoid singularities. 
And in order to make uh, to use minimal actuator power, we um, focus on the control moment gyroscope, uh, control moment gyroscope effect. So not on the reaction wheel effect, um, in order to keep the, the, the requirements low. Here are some simulation results. You see um, that using this assembly of gyroscopes, um, we get excellent torque tracking. So we we, uh, we we do once again this trapezoidal force profile or torque profile, and you see that we get. Uh, a very well, tr very good tracking of the one component we want about the tilt axis, and also about the two other torque components, which are about the two perpendicular axes where we don't want any torque. So we don't want any interaction uh, with the human about the other two, other two axes. And that works pretty well. And on the bottom, you see the, the corresponding human motion. The human is uprighted again from an inclination angle of 10 degrees. Actually, the actuator torques we need for this are just 15 newton meters peak. Although you see that the torques that are produced on the human are 300 newton meters. So that's really, there you see the amplification that we get by using the, the, the control moment gyroscope effect. Also, the powers are pretty low because we're not using the reaction wheel load very much. Okay, so in conclusion, we see that feed forward control can, at least in the preliminary experiments, uh, upright persons successfully, but they find it very uncomfortable. And we see that it's technically feasible to realize a balance assisting device that can be put into backpack and realized with simple and, uh, easy and simple uh, and cheap off-the-shelf components. So we haven't done this uh, with patients. We haven't found very good evaluation criteria yet, but uh, the next step would be to build the device and then test it. Thank you. so we can apply a torque in an arbitrary direction. We, uh, we assume that we will have sensors on the human to know in which, in which direction he's leaning. So all we're doing is we're actually calculating what's the current tilt axis. And, it's, and about that axis, we will generate the torque. We, we will not have any parasitic torques about the wrong axis because we can apply the torque vector in an arbitrary direction. That's a good question. That's nothing that we have really solved now. There, there's a lot of good research going on on accelerometer-based fall detection. So as you saw, we used an extremely simple fall detection algorithm just in case on the, on the capture point. But that's really not our, our, our work. And I hope that we can use uh, this existing work for other people. So you, so you mean how much inclination angle we can actually do? No, how far can the capture point be out of the basis of force? Well, that's just the definition, right? That's, it, it defines when or when you would be de de detecting a fall. That again goes to fall detection. It, it doesn't have to do with the function of the device, really. How about how big a fall? How big a fall? Yeah, actually, we we've tried up to twelve degrees. And we haven't made it go beyond that yet with the 10 kilogram constraint we set. So actually, we do trade off um, portability against total capturability. So it won't be possible to upright the person again when he's lost, uh, lost control completely. But we know that um, in, many, in many cases, uh, the balance problems are actually due just to, um, to decrease, um, um, uh, to, to increase delays. Is a nervous delays. So if we just bridge this gap of the first milliseconds and keep the person from falling, he might be able to 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 take take over again. treated as standing, we just say our capture region is the treadmill to the left, and it's the right border of the foot to the right, because we don't want people to cross over. Right. But apart from that, we, we allow people to take a step, and we consider that, and we don't trigger if they could still take a step. But during overground walking, mm -hmm. you have met some interactions, some of the dramatic that are attached to the target that you're not going to get a special yeah, because you're trying to deal with that. Well, it's, it's again, it's, it's again, uh, related to the detection of a fall, right? Not to the prevention of a fall. So no, we don't have, we don't do research of detection. 
might be interesting to do it, but uh, for now we haven't. We're just, we're just dealing with the prevention once we detected it. So then we could downsize the system even more. But I don't think we can go via the sensory input. I think we would have to go through a really stimulating muscle. So we need to generate uh, considerable forces. Okay, that's great. Uh